Hey everybody, this is Tom with TKI. Uh, today we are going to do an install of a belt drive on one of the new uh, Gen 4 skidoos. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through uh, each step uh, one by one through our instructions and cover any little tips and tricks that we like to do in order to help this make go or help this go smoother and faster for uh, you guys in doing the install. Uh, so where, we'll, where we will start is we've got our instructions and we're going to start page by page. So on step one, uh, go ahead and remove your plastic body panels on the right hand side. This sled's already got the hood off, so we'll uh, start from there. Uh, second one, it's easier if you remove the stock can. Uh, in some cases with guys with turbos, it's easier just to leave the turbo in place, you can work around it. So we're going to remove the muffler and then we're going to start removing the outer bolts for the chain case. Uh, the bolt that holds the muffler in place, there are a couple springs you got to worry about pulling out and also a 10 millimeter screw uh, that is up here kind of hidden behind the can. Uh, you got to pull that out. And your muffler will come out. You'll also have to disconnect the, the uh, cord from the factory wiring harness. All right, moving on to step three. There's eight chain case cover bolts. Uh, there's seven of them that are a T30 and then one of them that is also a 10 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and do the T30 bits first and then we'll remove the one 10 millimeter screw that is down on the bottom, kind of hidden uh, in the belly pan area. We will grab our T30 and we'll remove all these. Now there, uh, we'll grab our 10 millimeter again and we'll remove the one screw. You kind of got to go through the side down here uh, below the running board. There's a hole in the bottom pan that you can get your 10 millimeter through. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you have a catch pan in place for the oil, because all the oil from the chain case will dump out. All right, now we got that 10 millimeter removed. There's two screws right here. There's one in the, the, manner, the middle of the chain case, and then one over here. Uh, don't get confused. These are actually a different size than the other seven torques. So these are a T40 torques. So we need to make sure that we find our T40 bit and then we'll remove those two screws as well. Uh, now you can disconnect your speed sensor. There's a little tab on the back side that if you press it in, It'll pop out, and now, as you can see, our, our cover is loose. Uh, there's also another 10 millimeter here that the running board support attaches to the outside of the chain case. So we'll remove that one now as well. All right, so we've got all of our screws removed. As you can see, the cover is loose. Uh, this running board support kind of captures the cover that it makes it difficult to come off. The easiest way is if you take yourself a pry bar or a piece of tube or steel or whatever, you come right in here, the front opening on the running board. If you take your uh, pry bar and go down, so the outside lip hits out here on your running boards, you take and start pushing down on this, it flexes this running board support out so the cover comes right out. So if you press down on it, your cover comes right out. So now that we're done with this, we can set this off to the side. Uh, we won't be needing that anymore. All right, we are now at step six. Uh, on step six, you'll have to loosen the tensioner screw that runs the tensioner arm and this little shoe up against the chain to tighten your chain. As you can see, this chain from the factory is extremely tight. Uh, 
So we are going to loosen this screw and basically take it out because we will no longer use that. We will use the factory tensioner screw. Uh, on 2017 sleds, it was actually a T25 Torx bit, but on 18 and 19 sleds, it is actually a four millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, you can use the tools that come on your, cl your clutch side cover, or if you have some bits for a power tool, you can use that as well. We just remove the screw and remove the shoe and, and keep all these parts for a later date. All right, moving on to step seven, we're gonna remove the top uh, bolt from the chain case, and then we'll also remove the lower snap ring from the drive shaft. Uh, this top bolt is, the stock bolt size is 15 millimeter. So we'll put that on our impact and we'll just buzz that out. And then you'll need a good pair of snap ring pliers to get uh, bottom snap ring off as well. Now you can take now you can take your chain and gears out of the chain case. On step seven, something else to remember is there is a little steel sleeve that goes behind the gear on the top shaft, you will need to remove that. Uh, we don't use that, our gear pushes right up against the top bearing. So no need for that, so go ahead and put that with the rest of your spare parts. All right, we're moving on to step eight now. On step eight, uh, it talks about cleaning the residual oil out of the inside of the chain case. Uh, I like to do that and make sure you get it really clean. Otherwise, there is some blue dust that comes off of these belts and that blue dust tends to stick to the oil and it kind of makes a mess. So after the first time the belts do it, it won't do it again, but it does kind of make a mess. And if you leave all of the oil in the chain case or the residual, it'll actually really make a mess and kind of look terrible. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is remove this O-ring that is the outer seal on the outside. Uh, just take yourself a little pick get kind of behind it, that entire o-ring will come out. So now we'll chain, clean up the inside of the chain case and make sure all that's really nice and clean. Now that we've got the chain case all cleaned up, we can go ahead and remove this bottom plug. Uh, it's got four little magnets on it from the factory. If you look at it close, you can actually see all the metal uh, shavings and wear that came off the chain and the gears. So we'll get this out and we'll also clean up the inside of that shaft so we can install our bottom retainer. Uh, you can remove the bottom plug a couple different ways. You can either use a little wood screw and screw it into that plug, or if you have a small pry bar and a hammer, you can kind of put it on the side, uh, the outside edge of the plastic plug and tap it and that plug will actually turn sideways in the shaft. We've got our plastic plug now removed and uh, now we'll clean up the inside bore of the uh, bottom drive shaft. All right, we are now moving on to step 10. Uh, step 10, it's easy if you put the belt in now, uh, that way you can start putting all the brackets on it. Take our belt, place it in the chain case and let it sit. All right, we are at step 11 now. Uh, we need to install our right hand standoff. It goes on this side of the sled, kind of down into the bottom chain case area. Uh, there is a little tip or trick that I like to do. Uh, it comes with three small screws. Uh, they use an eighth inch Allen wrench. And what I like to do is actually put a drop of blue Loctite on these and install these screws 
in the threaded holes. There's three threaded holes. I like to install these first and I'll show you why here in just a second. If you uh, take and put a small drop of blue Loctite on the end of each screw and then get the screws started. All right, we have our three little screws installed on our right hand standoff. Now what I'm gonna do is take our bottom cover and if you notice one side has got slotted holes or slots, uh, those slots will actually slide right over top of the screws. So what I like to do is I'll screw these screws down till they touch the cover and then back it off a quarter of a turn on all three of those screws. All right, now that we have the uh, bottom screws all Loctited and turned down till they touch the cover and we back them off a quarter of a turn, now the nice part is if you ever have to remove this bottom cover, the bolts will basically slide right out from the cover. So that stays in place and you never have to remove those again. So when the cover goes on, it'll slide right over top of those bolts. So now we can go ahead and install the right hand standoff. All right, we're back at step 11. You're gonna to need to find your bag of hardware. Uh, it's got the bottom retaining washer, the bottom retainer for the bottom drive shaft in it, and then some nuts and bolts. Uh, you'll need to get one of the little six millimeter bolts and one of the aluminum washers out of it in order to install the right hand standoff. So we have our bolt and we have our standoff. Uh, the standoff will have to go in this way, so the little notch on the bottom goes uh, in first and then the ear. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and put this in and then get this bolted up. I like to use uh, blue Loctite on almost all the fasteners that we put back on the sled. Uh, between the vibration and everything on a two stroke, it just it's peace of mind to make sure that nothing comes loose. So we'll put a little line of blue Loctite on this fastener and then we'll screw it in place, but we will not tighten the bolt down. We'll leave everything loose until we get the bottom cover on the sled. All right, so we have that screwed in finger tight. Uh, it still moves a little bit, that way we can get everything aligned with the bottom cover. Uh, now we will have to install our left hand standoff. All right, we're on to step 12 now, where we can install our left hand standoff. Uh, this one is the same way. There'll be two six millimeter screws that are in the bag with a couple aluminum washers, and they will fit in both of these holes. And don't forget your uh, little drop of blue Loctite on both of these screws as well. We've got the two six millimeter screws installed. Uh, the heads of the bolts are 10 millimeter. If you notice, I'm using the hex head fasteners. To me, it's easier to use this because if you ever have to take the sled apart, or take something apart on the mountain, it always seems like you have a 10 millimeter wrench or a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, some guys prefer to use the stock fasteners that are the Torx bits. It really doesn't matter, you can use either one. Uh, I, per, my personal preference is to use the uh, hex head bolts. So now we've got both of those finger tight. The left hand standoff, now you can actually tighten those bolts. All right, we're on to step 13 now. So we're going to install our tensioner. You'll have to get your pry bar back again, uh, insert it into the running board, and then you'll pry down along the outer edge of the running board. Uh, make sure that the tensioner bracket or the support bracket from the running board running to the tensioner is on the right hand side of this boss. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit. You also are gonna have to try and hold the belt 
off to the left a little bit so that it stays on this side of the idlers, not on this side. So it's got to stay on the left hand side of the idlers. Alright, we're on to step 14 now. So we're going to take our factory tensioner screw and we're going to insert it through the hole on the back side of the chain case where it came from. Then it will thread into the, the boss uh, that holds the idlers here on, on our tensioner assembly. So you'll just start screwing the the tensioner screw in and it'll thread into the boss. You may have to loosen this bolt to align the threads properly. But that will be uh, that'll be good enough for now. Also on step 14, we need to install these two screws on the left-hand side of the tensioner. They are also the 6 mm bolts with the 8 inch thick aluminum washer. Uh, make sure blue Loctite on these two bolts and also the 8 millimeter bolt that is hidden down here uh, on the right hand side of the tensioner. to install the uh, eight millimeter bolt over here on the right hand side of the tensioner. Uh, make sure you put a line of blue Loctite down the length of the threads. Don't just put a drop at the end. Uh, this is also a 13 millimeter socket so have that ready to install. All right, we now have our six millimeter screws installed and our eight millimeter screw on the tensioner. Uh, the six millimeter screws will actually be torqued to 10 foot pounds and the eight millimeter fastener will be torqued to 25 foot pounds. Uh, I like to wait till kind of the end and torque all the bolts at one time and even mark them with a Sharpie on the head. That way you know everything's been tightened and torqued properly. We are now on to step 15. Uh, step 15, we need to install the bottom gear over the bottom drive shaft. Uh, if you look on the bottom gear, if you're confused which way this faces out, there's some engraving on it that says this side out. This will face you. Make sure you can read that writing before you put it onto the bottom shaft. So we'll go ahead and put this on now. We'll just kind of let it sit there. All right, we're on to step 16. Uh, on step 16, we need to or place the bottom hub onto the bottom drive shaft. Uh, with this hub, the small side and the tapered side needs to go on first, and then we'll align the bolts on the hub to the bolts on the gear. Now we'll take each one of the six screws that we have in the kit. They are a quarter inch Allen wrench. Uh, and we will put a, put a little bit of blue Loctite on each one of those and screw those each one into the six holes on the bottom hub. All right, as you're installing these, uh, as I just found out, make sure you've got a little magnet handy because if you drop one of these screws down there, you're going to have to get a little magnet in order to retrieve the bolt. If you notice, when I install Loctite, I like to put a line of Loctite down the length of the threads. So that way, every time the bolt rotates, the Loctite gets spread completely around the, the threads of the bolt. If you put just a drop, by the time you thread it in a half of an inch or say three quarters of an inch, 
that little drop will get diluted all the way down the threads and it really is not holding anything. It's best to do it so you get full coverage of all the threads. All right, now we've got all six of our bolts started uh, from our bottom hub into our bottom gear. Uh, you have to get a quarter inch Allen wrench and tighten up all those bolts and then each one of those bolts will get torqued to 25 foot pounds. So we're on to step 18 now. Uh, step 18, we have to put the bottom gear retainer into the drive shaft. So on the drive shaft, if you feel on the inside, there is a little ring in here that sits about 5 eighths of an inch in from the end of the steel drive shaft. So what happens is when we put this retainer in, uh, this back portion is threaded. When you tighten this bolt, it pulls this threaded stud into the cap and these, these little pedals that you see actually flare out. So they'll catch the, the ring on the inside of the steel drive shaft. So we need to make sure that this is correct. The face of this bottom retainer has to sit one quarter of an inch below the end of the steel drive shaft, not the hub from the steel drive shaft. So if you have a tape measure, if you measure, it's really close to a quarter of an inch. Uh, also on this one, we did this on purpose, but we will show you uh, sometimes on the tolerance that we have for our parts versus the manufacturer's parts, sometimes these bottom retainers fit a little bit loose. And I'll show you the easiest and best way to fix that. That way we make sure that this is good and tight and it will not move. Uh, so we'll go ahead and install this into the bottom drive shaft. The hex head bolt stays on the outside and then we'll just insert it directly in. So as you can see, this insert slid right in. Uh, on some sleds it actually fits a little bit tighter. On this one it fits loose. So the easiest way that I have found to fix this is if you have a center punch for drilling holes, uh, you know, it's easiest if you take your center punch or worst case, you could use a little Phillips screwdriver and you go right on the edge of where the aluminum and the steel drive shaft uh, land. If you just go around the outside and actually center punch it two or three times, it will swell the outside of that retainer out and it will make it tight in the bottom drive shaft. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a couple And as you can see now, the insert is tight in the bottom drive shaft, it's not moving. So the next thing we need to do is tighten this 9 16 bolt. And what'll happen when we tight it, tighten it, it'll actually pull the inner boss into the outer cap and it will flare those pedals out to catch the, the ring that's in the bottom drive shaft. So now we're gonna tighten up that 9 16 bolt. All right, now we have our 9 16 and we're going to put it on the head of the bolt and we're just going to go ahead and tighten it up. And about the time that it gets tight, you know, maybe go to 20, 30 foot pounds. As soon as it gets tight, we know that it's correct. Now we can loosen the bolt. Remove the bottom bolt from the bottom drive shaft or remove the bottom bolt from the bottom retainer. And you will no longer need uh, the steel bolt and the washer. Uh, the other way that you can do this is some guys prefer, if you have some green Loctite, some bearing retainer Loctite, you can put the Loctite on the outside of that boss before you insert it into the drive shaft. Uh, once you insert it, the Loctite will set up and then you can tighten up the bolt. That way works really well also. It's just a little bit of preference or how much time you may have while you're installing this. All right, now we're at step 19. Step 19, uh, you need to install the bottom uh, 
retaining washer and the bottom retaining bolt. Uh, so you take the bolt, put it in the washer, use some blue Loctite on the threads, put a good line of Loctite on it, and then you can screw it into the bottom retainer. You'll need a 5 16 Allen wrench in order to tighten up the bottom bolt. All right, we're getting ready to finish up step 19, which is torquing this bottom bolt. Uh, the bottom bolt will have to be torqued to 25 foot-pounds. All right, we're ready to move on to step 20. Se step 20 involves uh, placing the top gear on the top jack shaft and then also torquing the top bolt. Uh, what I like to do when the sleds are in the shop is I like to replace the top bolt on the jack shaft, uh, just personal preference. Uh, it's one of those, I don't know who installed this bolt. I don't know if they used an impact or if the bolt has been stretched over time. Uh, also, and it's just one of those precautionary things. I like to replace them with a ARP bolt uh, that is the same size, same length, but I just prefer to do it that way. Uh, you use your stock top washer the thick washer that came off the sled. If you slide your top gear on your top uh, jack shaft, you may have to have somebody go on the opposite side and actually rotate the secondary so that you can line up the splines with the cogs on the, on the belt. Blue Loctite applied to the top bolt, we're gonna go ahead and insert this. It will also get torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Uh, but we'll install it, put it finger tight for now, and then we'll go back and retorque it after we get the tension on the belt set. So we just have the top bolt snug now. So what we're going to do now is actually go and start tensioning the belt. Uh, so that way we can set the park brake in order to torque the top gear. So you'll need a 9 16 loosen this top bolt, and then we can use the stock tensioner screw to go ahead and get the belt deflection set. All right, we're getting ready to tension our uh, deflection on our belt. Uh, I like to use a little spring gauge. Uh, these spring gauges are made by Gates. Uh, you can find them on uh, Amazon or at a Gates hose and rubber distributor, but it's a little, it's, there's a little spring in here that is a poundage. So it, uh, when you push on it, there's graduations on the side that will tell you how many pounds of force you're using. Uh, setting stuff up here in the shop, we push right here at the top edge of the cover. On the top edge of the cover, there's actually graduation marks. So the larger lines are quarter inch, the smaller lines are an eighth of an inch. So we'll go back to our T30 torque bit or our four millimeter, depending on what year of sled you have. And we'll actually uh, adjust the, the uh, factory screw and you'll see the tensioner move as we're adjusting it. So now that we're adjusting the tension, the, the temperature in the shop today is about 65 degrees or so. In the shop, I tend to set them between five eighths of an inch and three quarters of an inch of movement. Uh, so if you look at the side of your, your chain case here, uh, we're really close to a half of an inch in. So if we're gonna go three quarters of an inch, we're gonna have to go uh, an inch and a quarter in. So something that you could do is take a silver magic marker and mark on the outside of the case where it is according like right now at rest and then also mark where it is uh, where it should be at you know 65 or 70 degrees uh, on the side of the cover we also have engraved eighth inch to three sixteenths when sled is hot I cannot stress enough you have to tension the belt even a chain on a chain case you have to tension it after you get the sled uh, up to temperature. So if you ride it up the road two or three miles, 
even four miles, stop and tension the belt or tension the chain. Uh, the chain case is growing way more than what we anticipated or you know what people thought it would be uh, but this sled if I tension it to three quarters of an inch here in the shop at 65 degrees I will be able to ride it down the road three miles and with three to five pounds of force it'll have three sixteenths of an inch of deflection uh, so we'll set you to show you how to set up and do that now but like I said, the, the biggest thing with these and the Gen 4 chain cases, you have to tension it when the sled is hot. Uh, it does not matter what it is in the shop. I would rather tension it loose, ride it, get some heat build up in the sled, and then tension the belt. Uh, if you ever hear people breaking belts on these, tensioning is key. All right, we're on step 21 now. On step 21, it talks about how to properly tension the belt. Uh, like I stated earlier, it's about 65 degrees here in the shop. I have my spring gauge set. Uh, my spring gauge is set just shy of five pounds. Five pounds, there's a little o-ring that helps you keep track of where it's at. So right here on the top edge of the cover, I took a gray or a silver magic marker, marked where the belt is at rest, and then I'm going three quarters of an inch. I set it up a little bit on the loose side so that way I've got room to adjust it when I'm on the hill and the sled is up to temp. So we're gonna pay attention to your O-ring, push it five pounds, and you can see that we've got it set. There's three quarters of an inch of deflection there. Now that you have the belt deflection set, you can snug this 916 bolt back up. The bolt only needs to be snug. Uh, all we're doing is keeping the inner races of the bearings from spinning so there's really not an important torque spec on here it needs to be just snug uh, don't over tighten it otherwise it'll be just more difficult to get off later so we'll take our 9 16 just snug and now you're done now you can set your park brake go back and retorque your top uh, top bolt on your drive shaft to 35 foot pounds. Also something I forgot on step 21, don't forget to replace your little R clip uh, that holds the, the tensioner screw in place uh, on the inside of the chain case. Remember to uh, replace that when you're done uh, tightening that bolt down. Uh, we have our torque wrench set at 35 foot pounds. We've got our park brake set and now we're going to torque our top gear. Alright, top gear is now torqued to 35 pounds and now we can work on replacing the bottom cover uh, of the chain case. Alright, we're now at step 22. 22, we, in, we uh, install the bottom cover of the chain case. Uh, we take the, the connector end of the speed sensor and as you can see, there's an opening down here in between the standoff and the footwell guard. The end of the plug will go through that opening and the bottom cover will slide into place. If you remember, we left the right hand standoff a little bit loose and we also set the height to those bolts. So now, if you just press over, you may have to hold the the right hand standoff in place a little bit but it'll pop into place over those bolts and your left hand standoff bolts now uh, are in the correct position. Now that we have the bottom cover in place we can take the three small bolts the eighth inch allen wrench and we can install all three of these screws on the left hand side of the bottom cover. On these, I prefer not to put Loctite. These are in an area right by your boot that you can see. Uh, it just makes it easier if you ever have to get the cover off, that you don't have to worry about stripping the Allen heads out. Uh, some guys will even go to the hardware store and get a Phillips head or even a small hex head uh, if you prefer that. Yeah. All right, 
We have our bottom cover installed now. We've got our three little screws replaced on the left hand side. Now we can actually reconnect our speed sensor to the factory plug. Uh, make sure that it pushes in tight and you can hear that click to know that it uh, everything is, is connected properly. Alright, we're going to finish the install of this uh, belt drive now. Step 23 and step 24. Uh, 23 talks about using a small zip tie to hold the wire, uh, speed sensor wire up against the side of the bulkhead uh, so that it doesn't rub on your muffler or uh, turbo or uh, aftermarket can. Uh, and then 24 is obviously reinstall your exhaust onto the sled, reinstall your side panel. Uh, going back to the belt tension, we need to make sure to check this after you ride it. So check it three or four miles up the road. We have it set loose now. We want the tension between an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch with three to five pounds of pressure. Uh, on our little spring gauge, I prefer to use the five pounds, it's just easier, but always be consistent about your belt tension. Uh, but always remember to check it when it's hot. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, uh, you can call us here at the office, 406-850-8091, uh, or go to our website, tkicnc.com, or even check us out on Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to reach out. Thanks, and have a great day.